getting into Target, obviously it can't just be you, your five children, and your husband anymore. You got a hundred doors. It's a two-part question for you. How quickly did you have to ramp up in terms of staff? Because that's a whole other ball game as an entrepreneur is hiring, not just hiring people, but hiring the right people, hiring people who understand your vision, hiring people who are as dedicated to seeing the business grow as you are. And two, well, well, let's start there and then I'll go into my second part. Okay, so for the first year when I was in Target, I was still in my house and I had one person helping me. Mm-hmm. So we were constantly mixing um, daylight hours. We were mixing. Um, only one person was helping me. Um, then um, I said, okay, the second year, they gave me more doors. And I was like, okay, let me get a, a warehouse space. So year two, I got a warehouse space. Year one in Target, I'm still in my house, handcrafting. And by that time, I got a warehouse space, and then I found a laboratory to help me. Um, help me, he said, just that I'll help you out. Um, you can use my tanks. And so, what that meant was, I'm not going to order your ingredients and supplies for you. I'll just let you use my tanks and you can pay me to use my tanks. So I had to still order big pallets and big drums of my ingredients because he didn't, he, he didn't want to fool with that. He didn't want to fool with almond milk. Um, and he just allowed me to use his tank. So that was year number two, which I'm telling you that in itself was so extra expensive, expensive for me. Cause I had to, not only pay for all of those ingredients, but I had to pay him to use his facility and his team and all that. Um, And I did that for another year. So by the time year three came was when I was able to find a, a, a better laboratory partner. And that's a whole nother story in itself. And then I was able to bring on logistics um, customer service. I acted as my own customer service person for, for a while. Um, yeah. So I really want to say year number three, year four is when we started, um, the structure, like real structure on the back end. Because so, can you tell us what was it that was driving your sales? Like granted the product is dope. You got a really good product. But you're in a hundred doors now at Target, and this stuff is moving. Mm-hmm. How do people even know you exist? Because when they go down those same aisles, they see the familiar brand names that they know, the Shea Moistures and the Miss Jessies and the Carol's Daughters. How did you even play in the same space as those household brand names? It was it just word of mouth, or did you guys do something? that was just so unique to yourselves and set you apart from them? Um, I think that it was word of mouth and it was social media I took advantage of. Um, That phone, that cell phone Mm -hmm. can do a lot for a business when a business does not have a lot of money to invest in big time marketing things. Um, And I think that definitely, number one, you have to have a good product. It was what's in that bottle, which uh, carried us. And uh, once some one person got a hold of it, they told somebody else. And then the influencer took the YouTube and then another influencer did uh, a, a style on their YouTube page with our product and then Instagram came on and so it was social media that helped us tremendously my business was built on social media um, and then influencers influencers would review they would do styles they would talk 
that was our word of mouth. They were our marketing. And um, even today, you know, I still live by that. I live by our influencer campaigns because people want to see the product. People want to see how other people are using. People want to see what their outcomes are. And they're listening. They're listening to them. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what helped, helped us a lot. These influencers, did you service them with your product? Did, were you responsible for paying them? Were they on your, your staff or payroll? Did you even have enough money to pay them at that point? Like, how did they even learn about your product? I have no idea how they found out about my brand and uh, my website. I don't know. I do know that when I first put my website up, New Yorkers was hitting me up like I was constantly shipping to New York and I think New York is everything starts there right that's what mm -hmm. that's that's what I believe in um no I didn't send them anything I didn't even know you could send pay people to do that back then or send them products I didn't know that all I knew was I was in my kitchen making a ton of stuff and shipping it out and um it was later that I found out from an influencer, uh, that that was the way to go. But beforehand, it was all organic. Hey, friend, hey, uh, I remember her. She was um, she's out of New York, and she reviewed my deep conditioner. Uh, she's a natural girl, just like me. Uh, our beliefs are similar. I went to my website, and I'm like, what in the world? Everybody's ordering my deep conditioner, and then I got an email from her. And she was like, hey, listen, I think, I don't know how many followers. She may, may have had like 400, 107,000 followers at the time. And she was like, I did a review on this deep conditioner that I bought from Whole Foods. Yes. And I was like, that's what's happening. She was like, yeah, did you see a lift on your back? I was like, that's what's happening. But um, now I'm at the point, of course, I team up and I collaborate with my influencers and I have my own influencer program, yes. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.